Let's begin the news by telling you that the federal government has inaugurated a 10-member inter-ministerial committee to enforce the Supreme Court's recent ruling on local government autonomy. According to a statement released on Tuesday by Shegu Imohiose, Director of Information and Public Relations at the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the committee will be led by Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akumi. Key members include the Minister of Finance and Coordinated Minister of the Economy, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, the Minister of Budget and Economic Planning, and the Accountant General of the Federation. The committee's primary objective is to ensure that local governments nationwide fully realize their newly granted autonomy. Let's move on now and tell you that examination boards in Kenya and Uganda have reached out to Nigeria's Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, to verify the authenticity of certificates presented by Nigerian students applying for admission to their universities. This move follows the recent discovery of fake certificates by JAM. The information was revealed in a report titled Registrar's Report on 2023 Admission and 2024 UTME Policy Meeting. JAM emphasized the importance of safeguarding the reputation of Nigeria's tissue institutions on the international stage and reiterated its commitment to maintaining the integrity of student records. In light of these developments, the Nigerian federal government recently suspended the verification of degree certificates from several countries, including Uganda, Kenya, Benin Republic and Togo, due to concerns of a certificate fraud. This suspension follows an investigation by daily Nigeria journalist Umar Audu, who exposed the ease of obtaining a degree within six weeks in Benin Republic. Away from that story now, let's also tell you that the Nigeria Labour Congress has warned that it will initiate an indefinite nationwide strike if any harm befalls its president, Joe Ajero. This announcement was made by NLC Deputy President Ado Kabiru Sani in a communique issued following the National Executive Council NEC meeting on Tuesday. The NEC convened to address Ajero's recent invitation by the police over allegations related to terrorism financing. The council resolved that Ajero should comply with the police summons, but instructed the nation's workforce to remain on alert for further instructions if the situation escalates. We agreed oh, that we abide by the rule of law and due process. We will honor the invitation of the Nigerian police because we are not a peaceless organization. But we believe that we need an extension of time after consultation with our lawyers because this invitation was extended to the Congress president yesterday and asked to, be, to report at the police by 10 a.m. today. So we are already working with our lawyers to look for extension of time. But this does not legitimize the charges by the Nigerian police to the Congress leadership. And secondly, we resolve that in an event our Congress president was arrested or detained at any moment, we put our appellate on red alert to mobilize our membership across the country that all workers in this country should down tool their services. This is the resolution. Motorists in Lagos are facing severe hardships due to the ongoing fuel scarcity, with many resorting to sleeping overnight at filling stations in a desperate bid to get fuel. Although the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NNPCL had said the shortages were caused by distribution challenges, it did not specify the cause of the current spike. New Central correspondent Bettina Willy reports. The fuel crisis has reached a critical point here in Lagos with long queues at patrol stations becoming a common sight. Drivers are facing hours of wait time and some stations have shut down entirely due to lack of supply. Many Lagosians are growing increasingly frustrated as they struggle to fill up their tanks while the scarcity causes disruptions in transportation, affecting businesses and daily commutes. It has affected me greatly and deeply. This morning I'm supposed to be in Aja, 
But because trying to get fuel and, you know, the traffic, the queue in the filling station isn't allowing me to get fuel and get, move the time I'm supposed to move. It's really affecting me. Since last week, I'm not able to do anything. Please, let our government intervene. Without the fuel in my car, I cannot go for my daily living and my daily business. Of business. So I've been here for at least 24 hours. In response to the crisis, Olufe Mishoneye, Chief Corporate Communications Officer of NNPCL, posted a video of Umar Ajia, the CFO of NNPC Limited, on his X page, attributing the supply shortages in parts of Lagos and the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, to distribution challenges. He also denied reports that the NNPC is indebted to international oil traders to the tune of $6.8 billion and that it has failed to remit revenues to the Federation account since January. Uh, we've seen also information out there that the company is over leveraged. That is far, far from true. The borrowings we have made so far by this company has been as outstanding at, at, at the end of 2023, uh, about five in number, two of which have also been fully repaid. While the authorities continue in their efforts to alleviate the situation, citizens may have to learn to conserve fuel and limit non-essential travel as a survival strategy and, of course, to ease pressure on limited fuel supply. In Lagos, for New Central, Bettina, Willy. And still discussing the fuel scarcity, residents in Abuja have called on the federal government to intervene in the current fuel situation and ensure the availability of products. They say the fuel scarcity is now affecting their businesses and is worsening the hardship they face. Amadine Uyi reports. Black market fuel sellers, many of them making the best of the current fuel situation. They are done several filling stations within the capital as they attend to impatient drivers who do not have the luxury of joining the long fuel queues. Some of the motorists express their displeasure over the inability of government to make petrol available and reduce the queues. I have been this, this filling station for the past three hours, queuing behind, then you could behind me. And uh, up to now, I've just stepped in shop, but I've not gotten fuel. And uh, the situation of this uh, fuel, I'm not comfortable at all. But I don't know what's really causing the fuel scarcity because to me, the fuel is already expensive, but we are still seeing scarcities everywhere. Um, about the fuel, eh, it's very critical because when uh, they grow up, it, 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 it does never happen like this. But during the uh, Obasanjo stroke Jonathan PDP, when they do subsidy, fuel will be much and be available for people to buy. But this one, since the APC do subsidy, there's nothing like say fuel will be available and it's very high cost. I'm not expecting this anymore anyway, so I don't know why we are getting to this again. So I thought everything is over, that we can have normal, you know, going to gas station, get your gas and just out. While some blame government's regulating agencies for failing their responsibilities to checkmate their situation, others say their situation is now affecting their businesses. They are not doing their work, especially consigned the foil, because they have, they're supposed to be going around and checking the price of foil everywhere, because the foil is coming from government, just like the dollars. That if I try to go and buy some goods, the 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 fare that the money I spent to buy the fare is very high cost. And when I come to buy the product, even when I bring the product to my shop, apparently I'll add money for the product. So if not, I'll not gain anything. So that is the pro, the really a factor that is affecting my business. I appeal to the federal government to do the needful because people are angry. If they say they should not protect, I don't want somebody to protect when somebody is angry, you cannot eat food. I bought for 10 times yesterday. Now, money is, money is my pocket, and it's all to 10 times another. And I have a family at home, I have to feed them. They urge government to come down hard on marketers and foil dealers for efforts at sabotaging the nation. These uh, foil um, uh, dealers, they are the ones sabotaging this government with their saboteurs among them. 
and they didn't supply the you know fuel the way they supposed to supply it and you can see different price from different plane station with the nigerian national petroleum corporation limited assuring citizens that it will end the queues before the end of the week. Many will be hoping they match their words with action. In Abuja for New Central, I am Amadin Uyi. As Nigeria prepares to commemorate its Independence Day on October 1, that's October 1st, organizers of the End Bad Governance demonstration have announced plans for a subsequent protest termed fearless to reiterate demands made during the August 1 to 10 demonstrations. The protesters are advocating for the dissolution of the Senate, raising the minimum wage, reversing fuel prices and electricity rates, releasing individuals detained during NSAS protests, as well as political prisoners, among other goals. New Central's Igbalani Omoni provides more detail. The previous protest, which saw thousands stick to the streets across the country, ended without significant concessions from the government. Most eastern Nigerian states opted out of the demonstrations, while some of the northern and western Nigerian regions witnessed large turnouts. <laughs> By estimate, approximately 15% of Nigerians participated in the protest, with a higher concentration of youth ages 18 to 35 and urban residents. However, did the protests achieve their aim? The aim and goals of the protest is partly achieved. It has given it has given a notice to the government that people are angry. And so the government should not be comfortable with what they are doing. I think that it's not achieved the same. That's what I think, because they're not taking it very seriously. You are spending anyhow and you're telling people to to relax. We are planning for you in the future. So the trust is not there, no matter what he says. So the only thing that can calm or can make people relax more is probably fight the security and there's food. Organizers say despite the government's promise to address some of the concerns, Litu has changed, hence the call for an independent day protest dubbed fearless to reiterate demands. The president did respond to our protest by saying no going back on a uh, subsidy removal. So it stands to reason that we well, are a continue no going back on protest. It's as simple as that. What a first protest cannot resolve or cannot bring home the expectations of the people, more protests will do as long as we remain peaceful. This protest will resume from the beginning of October and it might even resume earlier depending on situational variables. And when we start in uh, November, we will not stop uh, until these demands are met. With over 30 deaths recorded during the previous hunger strikes, security experts are concerned about the role of security forces during demonstrations. It's unfortunate that uh, the Inspector General of Police did make a statement that um, none of their operatives was given live bullets and that um, they were not responsible for the killings. And from the beginning of the protest till um, date, we have, we have documented 30 persons being killed across the country. Uh, oh no, the military did that. And you saw how the Nigerians reacted positively to that. As Nigerians continue to grapple with the same issues that prompted the initial protest, many are left wondering if anything will change. For now, citizens are coping through informal support networks, while others are resorted to emigration or voter apathy. In Lagos for New Central, Igbalani Omani. Thanks for staying with us here on News Now. Now, in a surprising turn of events, beans have uh, become the new luxury food item in Nigeria amidst rising inflation. The staple legume, once a, an affordable and accessible source of protein for millions, has seen its price skyrocket in recent months. The impact is being felt across the country with food sellers struggling to make ends meet. Now, New Central's Adibola Diduba has been investigating this story and she has more on the crisis in this report. Take a look. Before now, beans was one of Nigeria's staple food because it was easily affordable, but not anymore. In recent times, it has gone beyond the reach of the average Nigerian. In 2023, a paint bucket of beans, which sells for 3,000 to 5,000 naira, now costs 10 to 15,000 naira. A 100 kg bag of beans 
which sold last year for 50,000 naira, has increased to 250,000 naira per bag. Mrs. Faith Ozomo, who sells bean cake popularly known as Sakara, tells me how the price has varied over time and the impact on her business. I used to buy Akara. Before, I used to buy one pint of beans. 1,500. Now, now I used to buy 10,000 naira for paint. So now we are cutting Akara now. People are complaining these are too expensive. I used to buy two Dirica of beans. Now, see now, Akara has finished by this time. These are too expensive. No, it's not easy for us again. Everything is too expensive. A trader who deals in beans, Mr. Aze Friday, shares his experience. Last year, we said the record of beans 500 naira. We say Oloni 600 naira. Uh, the bag of it is just like 35,000 naira. Uh, white beans is 28,000 naira. The Olo is not up to 8,000 8, naira. But now we are buying it for 200 and 40,000, 250,000 naira. The Oloni also last year is not up to uh, 60,000 for probably 100 kg, but now it's 240,000 naira for 100 kgs. The Olo also 240,000 naira for uh, 100 kgs now. Cooked food sellers are not left out. Mrs. Yusuf Tokwe tells a story. <laughs> Clearly, removal of fuel subsidy has had a negative impact on prices of food items and government's 100 days free import duties on some staple foods may seem not to have any effect. Government must find alternative measures to ameliorate the hardship of people. In Lagos for News Central, Adebola Adeduba. Very insightful report there. Well, residents of Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital, have expressed divergent views on the state of food prices in the market. Some of them spoke to New Central Television attributing the current surge in food prices to the persistent fuel scarcity at petrol stations nationwide. Joshua Imarai reports. Despite a recent decline in Nigeria's headline inflation rate, market sellers say its effects have not been visible on prices of some food commodities. While financial experts say that food inflation make up 50% of the inflation basket, yet sellers are concerned about the continued surge in food prices at markets. Yam the way we they buy, 50,000, 25,000, we they buy and 300,000 for this year. As a new yam come myself, it's still worse. Our people go market yesterday, they no carry anything come. Everything I'm selling here, no one of them will not add money inside one week. Beans, I'm selling it 3 2, but before it's 2 8 for brown beans. This one now is 2 7, before it's 2 5. People, where would they buy crayfish? They say for before they fetch one cray, one bag of crayfish, then go use fuel like a 10 liter or 15 liter before they go make one bag of crayfish. Before they do it, the price don't, don't go high. Last month, can you, you can sell in tomatoes. One basket is 19,000 naira. This month, you can sell in 7,000. 7, um, I can sell in pepper, 20,000. This month, I'm going to sell in 10,000 naira with that. One year, I'm going to sell in 9,000. This month, I'm going to sell in 6,000, 5,000 naira. I okay, cannot say this come market. They know it been get through. They know they been pay another person. If you know one come, then go, then go increase, then go condom. If you the old one come, then go increase where we're now. Abuja residents have expressed differing opinions on the situation with the prices of food stuff in the markets. While some say that the price of tomatoes and other food ingredients have seen a drop in prices owing to the seasonal abundance, Others say the price of stable food items have continued to rise. Sellers and buyers also agree that the ongoing forced scarcity is also a contributing factor to the rise in prices. 
in Abuja for New Central. I am Joshua Imarai. All the way from that report in Abuja, let's uh, go back to the worrisome uh, field queues that we find in different states here in Nigeria. As we join our man, Bernard Akede, who's on ground currently to give us uh, a latest report uh, concerning the field queues. Good morning to you, Bernard. No. I can't hear. No, I understand. The audio... Bernard, I'm sure you can hear me. Um, what's the latest from where you are? How are Nigerians reacting to the field queues? Are filling stations currently selling? All right, we'll try as much as possible to establish um, a connection as well. Uh, Bernard, if you can hear me, um, can you? I, I know it's raining right now, but can you tell us, give us an update? Are the field queues reducing by numbers or are the filling stations actually selling? Anyway, hopefully we'll get back to our man Bernard to give us an update there. Uh, just finding out what Nigerians are indeed uh, saying and how they're coping uh, with the current uh, worrisome situation. Well, let's move on now to our next story in response to Nigeria's challenging economic climate and high unemployment rates. More Nigerians are turning to skill acquisition programs and prompting the U.S. and Nigerian actions in the form of grants and training. Let's join the Chilima Ona from New Central as she gives us details in this report. Skill acquisition has proven to be an essential life-saving skill for most people especially young Nigerians. With the concern of unemployment and limited skill acquisition centers in the country, the U.S. African Development Foundation, in collaboration with the Vocational Academy, is equipping young Nigerians with vital skills. Most people go to school and they come out not having skills. But when they get skills, the employers are waiting. The employers are actually desperate to have people with skills. And that's what makes the work easy. Give them professional skills, and they will surely get jobs or they'll have skills to work for themselves. And so that's what the economy needs and that is what has helped a lot of young people in Nigeria. With initiatives like this is to equip um, young people um, with different employability skill sets that they can use to even maybe possibly work for different employers or alternatively set up their own business and that you have that multiple creation of job opportunities for others. From electrical and solar installations, to fashion designing and catering, the skills to be taught and acquired are endless. For some Nigerians, the understanding of the benefits of skill acquisition cannot be overemphasized. Now in Nigeria, or let me say in the world, I don't think we can all get white collar job, which we all clamor for. So I believe when you have your skill, you are good to go wherever you find yourself. The beautiful thing about skill acquisition is in our economy or in Nigeria as a whole, um, that's one of the things that helps you to be self-dependent and help you to be independent of the situation of the economy. So you can strive for yourself, you can fund, um, get funding, and you can be able to do business and get yourself well to do. When you learn these skills, it's actually going to help you financially, mentally also, because these uh, skills are actually bring us out, that's actually bring me out especially. Most things I can't do in the kitchen, I find myself doing them, like knowing my um, coronary terms, those things, the kitchen safety and all that. As the country continues to tackle the issue of unemployment, it is important that vocational and entrepreneurship training play a role in shaping the lives of Nigerians and boosting the economy. In Lagos for New Central, Chidima Ona. All right, let's try now and uh, go straight to the streets uh, to connect with our man, Bernard Akede, who's actually uh, finding out what Nigerians are indeed saying concerning the long queues at different filling stations. Good morning to you, Bernard Akede. I, I believe you can hear me this time. Hello, Bernard. Good morning. I can hear you clearly, Joe. Um, Nigerians are not saying so much. They're saying the same thing they've been saying for the past... God knows how many years uh, that we've been enduring field queues. And it's even worse this morning because the weather elements are coming down, as you can see. It's been raining here in Lagos uh, for a couple of minutes. It's been raining a lot on the island before then, and now on the mainland it's raining a lot. Um, just over my right shoulder, you see there's a, a field station here, NNPC. They've been selling for hours this morning, even on our way to work. Uh, we saw these queues here before the field station even opened and commenced selling petrol. There were people who had been here waiting to buy the product. We're able to speak to some of them who 
obviously lamented the situation of things. It's been like this for months, and uh, we're still here. Now, the funny thing is, just in front of me here is another fuel station. So both fuel stations are side by side each other, and you know, the queues continue. It's been on for months. Uh, we started this on Monday, monitoring the filling stations, how the queues have been, and now it's it's really really terrible at this point. Uh, so it's it, it has nothing has improved, nothing has changed. You know, if anything, it's just getting worse. All right, but um, can you confirm to us that um, either of the filling stations that you came across while uh, en route to uh, your current designation were actually uh, selling? Is there any form of uh, selling at any filling stations? Yes, there is. Uh, so there are some fuel stations that are selling, like this one to my uh, over my right shoulder. I mentioned there are some are selling. Um, there are others who are not selling. The gates are completely shut. However, you would you want to admire the hope of Nigerians who are standing or who are parked in front. Who completely shut have not sold in a while. Are still not. Um, I'll, I'll give you another example now. I mentioned the one to my right, which you just saw. Now, here's another one here uh, who has been selling as well all morning. Uh, there have been cars parked in front of this other one I'm standing in front of right now. Um, all through the night, as some have said, unfortunately, because of the rain, uh, there's nobody coming close to speak with me. But just the same way we've had it over the, you know, over the past few days, people parked in front of fuel stations all through the night in anticipation that at some point of the day, the fuel stations will open up and begin to sell. I hope we have somebody who would like to speak, and he too says he's been here for a while. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right. Um, while well, we try to establish connection with our man, Bernard Akede, uh, finding someone to talk about uh, the current situation, we've also seen in previous reports how Nigerians are not in any way in support of uh, what is happening in different states, especially with the long field queues that we're seeing. Let's see if we can establish connection one more time with uh, Bernard Akede. Bernard, if you can hear me. All right. Anyway, we'll, we'll do well to see if we can establish connection one more time with our man, Bernard Akede, who's actually on the streets and uh, filling the polls of Nigerians, listening to what they have to say about the current heart-wrenching, painful experience of having to wait at long queues, hours after hours, just to ensure that you can get premium motor spirit or fuel just to move around. Let's move on now to our next story here on News Now. Nigerians have been taxed to support citizens in need and those living below poverty line. This was made known by humanitarian stakeholders in Abuja, where they urged citizens with means in the country to imbibe the culture of giving to the charity. constitute the last batch of the food items that were given to the federal government of Borno State. You can remember that some few months ago, we were at Gwadha local government area to distribute the first batch. The second batch was distributed in, 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 in... The poverty rate, you know, averages between 40 to 60 percent. And this kind of poverty, it's not poverty that you have one car and I have two cars. You have one house, I have three houses. No. This is absolute poverty. Poverty among people who cannot eat well. They don't drink clean water. Their houses are not good. They don't have skills to sell to actually get the kind of gainful uh, bits and pieces from the society. You know, they suffer the lack of infrastructure. Electricity is not in their areas. Their roads are very bad, and so on and so forth. So this humanitarian day is literally to awake people to make sure that every single year you wake people up to say that, look, you may be okay, but there are many others who are not okay. We know there are individuals that have the resources, but I, I believe that they don't, they don't see this particular um, aspect as where they can actually venture into, invest their money in helping people. We are calling on these particular individuals to come into this particular field, this humanitarian field, and help people. Because there's a whole lot of people in Nigeria actually suffering. 
in as much as there is a whole lot of activities from the government being rolled out and all, but definitely you don't expect the government to do everything. Residents living along the Nyaya Maraba uh, border communities uh, between Abuja and Asarawa State have uh, accused the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency of abandoning citizens along the axis to the continuous gridlock, which is now affecting their businesses. Now, this was as some of them affected by the recent floods in the area falling torrential rains spoke to New Central Television saying their businesses and livelihoods are now at risk. New Central's Emmanuel Bagudu reports. Stranded residents of Mararaba wondering whether to drive into the flood to access the federal capital or return home. They are not alone in this predicament as travelers from the northeast and neighboring north central, unfortunately, which affected movement along this major road corridor. Seen along the road is an excavator belonging to the Federal Road Maintenance Agency, which, however, is not being used to contribute to efforts at tackling this flood. Citizens along this axis say nothing has been done in the last nine years to ameliorate their suffering. People cannot move with their motor, people cannot move with their leg. Please, we are begging the federal government that should not give them again. Let them all should go because all their work is a fail and they are deceiving federal government. Federal government, they give them the money. What, what is their work? All their work is a liar. Go to Maraba Joshua. So many people are passed through eh, eh, from Maraba Joshua. There's no road. They can come and patch the road and go away. Let's come and catch this, this, this caterpillar and move out, out of this place. You see, actually, when the rain came, the blockage will even cost like a hold up that is up to like two kilometers or more than. People that normally go to work, sometimes we have to go back home because they will be very late. Like they have to go back home, not to even go to work for the whole day. It's last, 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 they also added that the difficulties on the road is not affecting their businesses and livelihoods. It links to Abuja and definitely anybody working from Kefi to Maraba here, his daily means is actually Abuja. Our call is that uh, the government should come and do something properly. They should be maybe uh, somebody that knows this thing very well so that maybe the donation the donation can be can be expand so that uh, it can contain a lot of erosion so that uh, this thing will not be flooding to the uncovering the road it's a call for synergy involving the Cairo local government area and Nasarawa state the Nasarawa state government and of course the federal ministry of works to take immediate action Nasarawa state for new central i am Emmanuel Bagudu welcome back Ivory Coast health authorities have reported 28 cases of MPOX, with one person dying from the virus that has killed hundreds in Democratic Republic of Congo. The National Public Hygiene Institute said the fatal case and some others were recorded in the country's economic capital, Abidjan. According to the INHP, tests were being carried out to identify the strain of the latest MPOX cases, adding that monitoring had been strengthened. Cases identified in the West African country this year were of the subtype that spread during a previous epidemic in 2022, known as CLED-2. A more contagious and deadly subtype known as CLED-1B has emerged in DR Congo, Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda and in Sweden. In East Africa, Kenya and Uganda have ramped up their screening process at the border after the World Health Organization declared the MPOX surge in Africa a global public health emergency. Outbreaks have been reported in Burundi, Kenya, Rwanda and Uganda since July. Uh, when the, we were, this MPOX was reported uh, that uh, it is a disease of uh, international health concern, uh, we heightened our alertness and preparedness. All travelers coming through Uganda, from Rwanda, Burundi, uh, Southern Sudan, and Uganda actually must pass through our screening desk. But before they arrive at the screening uh, desk, 
they have to do the hard washing. And in the hard washing... Amnesty International says Burundi's president, Evarit Sein Daishimai, continues to rule with an unrelenting wave of repression, despite hopes of change when he took office four years ago. The organization claims human rights defenders, journalists and members of the opposition are still subject to intimidation, harassment, arbitrary detention and unfair prosecution. Daishi May, who took part in June 2020 after the unexpected death of President Pierre Nkurunziza, has been lauded by the international community for slowly ending years of isolation under his predecessor's chaotic and bloody rule, although concerns about rights abuses persist. In 2015, Nkurunziza's run for a third term in office backed protests and failed coup with violence leaving at least 1,200 people dead, while about 400,000 fled the country. Let's head down to Central Africa, where at least 20 people, including a baby, died when an overcrowded boat sank on a river in Western Democratic Republic of Congo. According to local authorities, the incident which happened over the weekend involved a motorized wooden vessel on the Lukini River in the Kutu area of Mai Ndombe province. The district administrator, Jacques Nzenza, said the overloaded boat carrying about 300 people and goods sank after it hit some wood as it was heading for the town of Nyoki River. And of course, lake voyages are common in the vast Central African country where passable roads are scarce. At least 25 people died in July when a boat on the Congo River sank in the eastern province of Maniema. About 100 died in 2019 in a wreck on Lake Kivu. Former U.S. President Barack Obama has told fellow Democrats in Chicago that the torch has been passed to Kamala Harris and that the United States was ready for her to become president. Obama, who was greeted with rapturous applause and chairs at the packed arena hosted the party's nominating convention, said Vice President Harris would fight for Americans and called her November poll rival Donald Trump dangerous. History will remember Joe Biden as an outstanding president who defended democracy at a moment of great danger. And I am proud to call him my president, but I am even prouder to call him my friend. Yes, she can. Yes, she can. A Harris Waltz administration can help us move past some of the tired old debates that keep stifling progress because. Of Nigeria's under-18 women team have advanced to the knockout stage despite losing their second group stage match to Austria, 33-14 on Tuesday, August 20, 2024, in the President's Cup Group A at the ongoing 2024 International Handball Federation Under-18 Women's Championship in Chuzhou, China. Following the conclusion of the group stage matches in the President's Cup, Nigeria was drawn against Chinese Tapir, while Kosovo will face Egypt in the placement matches. 
The results of the placement matches will determine the final standings of the competition. Nigeria's under 18s initially lost to Croatia 33 to 11 and Montenegro 26 to 9 in their first two Group B preliminary matches, thereby missing out on progress into the main round. However, the team managed to secure a victory against Angola, winning 29 to 21 the third Group B preliminary match. This victory placed them in the third position in Group B, allowing them to advance to the President's Cup alongside Angola, Chile and Austria. Manchester City forward Phil Foden won the Professional Footballers Association Player of the Year Award on Tuesday. Foden played a key role in City, winning an unprecedented fourth consecutive Premier League title last term. A 24-year-old scored 19 times and delivered eight assists for Pep Guardiola's side as they pipped Arsenal to the title on the last day of the season. Foden has already set his sights on a fifth successive Premier League crown after City started their title defence with a 2-0 win at Chelsea on Sunday. Foden also won the 2023-2024 Premier League Player of the Season award and was named the Football Writers Association Footballer of the Year. Let's also tell you that Chinese swimmer Song Yang will return to the pool at a major domestic meet next week following the expiry of his four-year ban for doping. A state media has reported Song, China's first Olympic gold medalist in men's swimming, will represent his home, as Xinjiang province, at the National swim Summer Swimming Championships, which start on Sunday in Hefei. Wang Wei, director of the Xinjiang Provincial Swimming Sports Management Center, said a 32-year-old will compete in a 400 meters freestyle, the event he won at the 2012 London Olympics, according to Xinhua News Agency. The triple Olympic champion was banned from competition for four years and three months for a dope test violation in 2018 in which he and members of his entourage smashed vials containing blood samples. The ban, reduced from eight years on appeal, expired on May 28. And that's a wrap on the news for this hour. Before we go, a quick look at the top stories. Longer queues build up in Lagos as shortages persist. 20 killed as overloaded wooden vessel capsizes in DR Congo. Amnesty International says Burundi on the wave of repression. You can be part of the news by sending in your eyewitness reports to the WhatsApp number on the screen. And you can follow us on all socials. We are at News Central TV. And you can also watch us live on DSTV Channel 422, Star Times Channel 274, Avo TV to stream live on YouTube. I'm Joe Hansen. Many thanks for watching. Stay with us. More programs coming your way. Mm -hmm.